Today I wanted to talk about being housebound. You can be housebound for several reasons. I'm going to be talking about being housebound medically. Um, my doctor never told me that I needed to stay home. It was simply that I am incapable of going out on a regular basis. I don't have enough energy and um, it takes me a long time to recover. And so when I do leave, the only time I really leave my house, besides going to the store, is to go to the doctor. And I don't even go to the store that often. Majority of the time, my parents go for me. Humans are not meant to stay at home and be cooped up in their house. And so it can be mentally taxing. Um, and it very much is over a period of time. I've been housebound for a while now. I want to say it's been like two years. So when I was, when I started my channel, I was housebound. But I was able to go to the store by myself. I'm at the point where I need my parents to take me. Like I could go to Walmart by myself for a little bit and um, take my walker and walk around Walmart and get what I needed. Now I either rely on Amazon or Walmart to bring everything to my house or my parents go drive me and help me in the store and um, that's the only way I can go to the store. And being housebound, as I said, is mentally taxing. So before I get into any tips that I have to coping with it, I do want to say that if you ever feel unsafe, you should 100% call the suicide hotline. I'm going to put the number up on the screen for you because I can't remember it. I also recommend if you are housebound to go to some type of therapy, whether it's like some kind of app or going physically to a place. If you're able to do that, I know that it can be hard um, on top of like doctor's appointments and going to talk to somebody but your mental health and just like your physical health are very 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 important. So I have some tips on my phone that I'm going to read off to you so I might be looking down a little bit um, and they're kind of in order but not really um, and so these are just some things to keep you occupied. Um, it's really easy simple things that don't take a lot of energy. They're things that I can do there, there are people out there that might be able to do a little bit more or they might have totally different things that they enjoy doing. My cat is eating right now, so sorry about that. But um, there, there are things out there that you can do that I don't mention in this video. And so if you think of something that you can do in like a, your room or in your house or something like that, totally comment down below so that other people that maybe don't like the options that I gave in the video have some more options in the comments. Okay, so the first thing would be um, start a craft. A craft could be anything um, like art related obviously but like um, crocheting or knitting, painting. Painting probably takes a little bit more effort though because you gotta clean up everything that you got out. Puzzles, sewing, any type of art. There's a bunch of art out there. There's origami. Um, what's another thing of type of art? My mind's blinking. There's a crap ton of art and Pinterest can be a very big place to help you find some art that you might be interested in and you don't have to be amazing at it. It can just be something that you enjoy doing. You don't you don't have to be like Picasso. You can just do it for fun and to help escape everything that's going on with you. And it can be something that is very um, beneficial to your mental health as well. And so I really recommend trying to find some type of art. If you're not into art, you can play video games or you can watch TV or you can read a book um, with things like that. I definitely recommend you having some kind of reading list and a movie list and a TV show list because a lot of the times, for me, I can be totally fine for several weeks, maybe a month even, and then I watch everything that I'm watching. Like for instance, um, I was watching Dexter like a year ago, I think it was, and I've watched Dexter a million times by, then, by now, but like after I finished Dexter, I got really depressed because I really liked that TV show and then I felt like I had nothing to watch. But because I have this movie and TV show list, I can go in there and there are things that I would enjoy. But when you're in that headspace, nothing kind of seems enjoyable. But if you have some things that you know that when your mind is more um, logical and not into like this everything sucks kind of mentality, you put things on a list when you're in a happier mood. And so when you're in a shitty mood, you take that list and you're going to find things that might not interest you a, a lot but that'll help you get out of that mind space of this sucks. I just want to leave the house for a little bit, but you're unable to for whatever reason. And so I really recommend having a list. And that list can be movies, TV shows, books, different project ideas, different types of um, art or craft ideas. 
but you can just have a list of things that you can do for when you feel like everything is crashing into you and everything is just coming in and overwhelming you all at once. You have some ways and some things that are just listed that you can go do. And sometimes you might just need to sit there and feel those uncomfortable feelings because they're not they're not fun, but I don't think that you should run away from them either. Um, and so, you know, fill them for a little bit as long as it's safe. And then, you know, go to that list because allowing yourself to feel upset is completely normal. And honestly, if you ask me, I think it's totally healthy. So after you, if you need to feel and go through those emotions, then go to your list and find something that kind of interests you. And then when you watch it, you're most likely going to enjoy it a lot more than you originally thought because there are things that you thought you would like when you're in a better mood. Another thing you can do is blog or start an uh, Instagram account dedicated to things that you like. Um, maybe even start a YouTube channel. I started a YouTube channel a year ago to help cope with everything and keep everything in order. I'm way behind and I keep saying that because I hate it that much. Um, and I think it's almost been a month since my, since I've posted a video, so I'm sorry about that. Um, I was in the hospital again, and I'm going to make a video about that later. So I've been in the hospital twice, I think, in one month, I think it is, which is, like, mind-blowing. Um, but what was I saying? Yeah, Instagram, Tumblr, um, uh, YouTube channel, um, maybe a Pinterest any type of social media, Facebook page, something that you can like get your frustrations and your feelings out and talk about things that are going on in your life without a filter is something that can be very beneficial. It can be something to do and a lot of, and it also helps with your mental health because keeping all that inside is just not healthy. It's going to come out one way or the other. It's either going to come out with you crying and you're really sad or it's going to come out in a meltdown or it might take years, it might take months, whatever it is, however long it takes for it to come out. If you keep all those emotions inside, they're going to come out eventually in a way that you don't want them to come out. So if you put them out in a, net, in a more positive way um, that's healthy, like any of those things I just suggested, it'll be a lot easier to cope with instead of dealing with it all when it's like huge instead of bits and bits and bits and pieces. Mm. what I left off at. Something that I don't think I would enjoy but some other people might enjoy would be starting a garden. Like a garden outside might take a lot of energy. I keep wanting to say spoon so if you're chronic if you know about chronic illness you know what that means but it will take a lot of energy but you can do something that's like the little bitty small plants and you can put them on the window or I don't know if this is true but I think you can use a light like a lamp for light, for sunlight, if you are in a dark room or something, or a, win a room that doesn't have windows, but like little, a little small garden either inside your house or if it's possible, maybe one outside could be something that could be really helpful. It's not going to be something that you can do all the time, but for those days that you feel really good, it could be an option. If, fin if you are able financially and physically, I recommend getting a pet of some sort. It can be something super, super small, like a hamster. Those do take a lot of effort, I think, because you got to clean the cages and everything. But compared to like a cat with a big litter box and having to carry the litter, that might be something that's a little bit more doable. I got cats before I got really sick and it's become incredibly hard to take care of them. And so my parents have to help me a lot of the time, which I don't really like them having to do that because it was supposed to be something that was mine that I take care of and they're, they're like my children. And the fact that I'm not able to really take care of them as well as I used to really sucks. But a pet can provide amazing, bleh, amazing emotional support. My cats sleep with me on a regular basis. If I start crying, Lily comes and hugs me and comes and cuddles me. She is my rock. I don't think I would handle this without her because I'm in a situation where I don't have anybody to go hang out with. And even, even if I did, they might be able to come over here. But I'm pretty sure you know finding friends that are going to deal and with um, the chron- chron- bleh, I can't talk for some reason. Finding friends that you can- that can deal with the chronic illness world where you're, oh I can't hang out, oh I can't hang out, hey yeah I can hang out, and then canceling at the last minute. Um, finding good friends that will deal with that 
and I don't think dealing is the right word, but just like being understanding enough to be like, she really does want to hang out, she just can't, is really hard. And I lost a lot of my friends when I got really, really sick because I used to hide the fact that I was sick. And then I stopped being able to physically hide it and I lost a lot of them, which sucks. And it, and it like created a very um, negative mind space at the time, but I'm doing a lot better. And so I guess that leads me in, if you have friends, hang out with them as possible. If they're really good friends that are not toxic and they're positive and they're meant to be in your life, the fact that your house is dirty is not going to matter. When you're chronically ill, your house is going to be dirty at times. And so I would, I know a lot of people would be like, well, I can't invite them over because my house is, or my room is dirty. If they care about you, they're going to understand. And even good friends might even actually help you clean up. So, you know, if you have friends that you can see, try to keep that bond because that bond is really hard to keep in my experience when you're sick on top and i a big problem for me is that i'm autistic and so my finding meaningful relationships relationships is really hard i'm having a huge time talking um but yeah friends is a big thing i think i was talking about something before the friends and i kind of got sidetracked i don't remember what it was though maybe my phone will help me Oh, pets. I think it was pets. But yeah, find a pet if it's possible that you can financially take care of and physically take care of that'll provide a lot of emotional support. So friends and pets are something I recommend. Let's see. If you're not able to have physical friends in front of you, I have found a very big benefit from having online friends. I have a lot of people that I talk to online that um, that really help when I need somebody to talk to, they're always, they're really always there and they're just, especially if they're other spoonies or other people with chronic illnesses, they really freaking understand and they're just a great resource to help you cope with things that they're probably going through something similar. And you know, when you're surrounded by people that are healthy that don't understand it, like your family, um, those friends are like amazing. And so I definitely recommend having at least an online friend if you can't have a physical friend. And so those are all my tips. I totally recommend you dropping some ideas below that I didn't mention because I made a list and I kind of was blanking when I made it and um, these are just the things I got cut off. But these are just some things that I've done and so I totally recommend you trying them out. And as I said, don't forget to leave some stuff down in the comment section. Give this video a like and I'll see you next time, whenever that is. Don't forget that I love you. Remember, you know your body better than anybody else. So please listen to it. Thank you for staying alive and I'll see you next time. Bye. Ugh, I can't remember my endings.